Nathan, as an historian, you're well aware that there's been questions since throughout the history of the church about the nature of Scripture. Right. What is this thing that we hold in our hands? And what does it tell us about uh, God and truth? Uh, and uh, we, there's a sort of a, a, a resurgence of interest about the doctrine of inerrancy among evangelicals yeah. today. And so as we think about that, it raises the question for me, has the church always held to this doctrine that we call inerrancy? Yeah, this is one of my favorite questions. So it became popular about a generation ago to point out that the word inerrancy only became, became common in the mid-19th century. And on the basis of that, to argue that inerrancy was a new idea, it had only been around for 100, maybe 200 years, and so uh, we need to reject that paradigm and embrace something else. It is true that the word inerrancy only becomes common in the mid-19th century, but inerrancy is just a modern way to describe uh, the doctrine that uh, when God speaks, He always speaks truthfully, and that includes in His written word. Uh, and even the people who argue against inerrancy, uh, at least the ones I'm talking about, believe the Bible is the Word of God. They believe that God is truthful and that He speaks truthfully. And so uh, I'm not understanding why they are uncomfortable with the word inerrancy and believing that that's a more recent idea. Uh, bottom line is the church has always believed that God speaks truthfully through His Word to every matter that He addresses. Doesn't always speak with technical precision, uh, the Bible is in a book about automobile mechanics, uh, but he always speaks truthfully, and our modern word for that is the doctrine of inerrancy. Okay, that's, that's really helpful just to know that the church is always held to this thing we call inerrancy, that when God speaks, he speaks truthfully. Uh, I think an, an, another question for me is, why has the church always held this? Why did the patristic era, why did, they, why did they hold the scriptures with this sort of reverence and see that the nature of scripture was God's word and spoken truthfully? Right. So the church has historically said that uh, if God cannot be trusted in his word, can he be trusted at all? So the Bible tells us that we know enough from nature to know that God is out there and that in some sense we're accountable to Him. But how can we understand what He expects of us? How can we understand what it means to worship Him? How can we understand what it means to be obedient to Him and to meet His expectations uh, if we don't have some sort of sure word from Him? So ultimately this is a question about uh, authority, obedience, and worship. Uh, we want to know how God speaks authoritatively to us. We want to know how we can be obedient to that authoritative word. And we want to know how to rightly worship this God who is there and who's speaking to us. And uh, the Bible gives us uh, God's definitive, final, clearest revelation for who He is and what this world is and who He expects us to be in this world for His glory. And so for the same reasons that the church has always held inerrancy, do you believe that the church today should retain this doctrine of inerrancy and believe that when God speaks, when God reveals himself, he does so truthfully? Absolutely. I think it is one of the most important doctrines in the Christian faith. And for the record, I don't think we should believe it today because the church has always believed it. Uh, I think that's an important secondary reason. I think ultimately we want to believe it because I think this is what the Bible teaches about itself, uh, that God is there. He speaks. He speaks truthfully. Much of that is recorded for us in Scripture. And so we can take God at His Word when He speaks to us through Scripture. And when we read Scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can know how to think rightly about God and live rightly before God.